All right, all right, all right. How's it going, everybody? Take a look here. We officially have all the stringers in the boat cut, measured, leveled, you name it. Also, I'm prepping to put the engine stands. You'll see me refer to these as engine stands. There's also engine mounts on the motor, so it gets a little confusing what I'm talking about, but I'll try to keep it consistent. So you'll see my last two stringers. Those are going to be independent on the right side compared to the left side. You still want them to all tie in together just like we have throughout. But let me show you some, some gotchas here that a lot of people don't think about when they're building these stringers for the rear. So, as you can imagine, the water as you're racing will try to move to the very back. If, just like we have been doing, you keep the floor completely level even back here, what's going to happen is as the boat sits, it's going to try to pull water in that corner. So what you want to do is when you're cutting your stringers or when you're putting your fiberglasses, try to get yourself at least like a half a bubble where the water runs towards the bilge area into here. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to make this perfectly level even back here, try not to just because you'll have water pulling that back and it's kind of annoying it makes for grime and that's where most people put their battery on this side I've seen on the opposite side over here you have your fuel cell and you just don't want water lingering around back here if you can help it you want it to kind of um, run downhill into the bilge area so just some gotchas let's also take a look here where we're gonna put the engine mounts you'll see I pre-drilled some holes because we're gonna flip this thing over here in a little bit and mount these you also see I have an oscillating blade. The reason I brought these two out here is when you're doing your project, if you hadn't taken the time to measure everything perfectly and you're kind of worried that you're not going to hit your engine stand and your engine mounts perfectly and it's going to be off a little bit, well, you can do two things. You can either I'll grab one of the blocks here. You can choose to not mount it and then just toenail screws in from the sides and glass over it or Kevlar over it that that would be all right I like to drill from the bottom just so it gives that a little bit more security so the the engine can't ride up and down the thing is if you do it this way and there is something wrong try to make your screws a little bit closer towards one side if you're still using an oscillating blade that's the reason I say that is because if you look if you do screw up you can get underneath there with an oscillating blade from the bilge area you won't have the ability to get to it from from this side because there will be uh, flooring already over here so you won't be able to get the blade in so you want to try to center your screws a little bit um, you're not going to center them but you're going to offset them a little bit closer this way so your, os your oscillating blade can nip these screws off if something happens so just something to keep in mind a little little tip there but if you're not sure or you're kind of scared that this is going to get screwed up and you put all this effort into putting glass and everything on here you can just save it later and just toenail some stainless steel screws all four around you won't even see it anyway because it'll be glass but just some ideas i'm pretty confident in mine so i'm going to actually flip this engine stand over and screw them in from the bottom and it won't be through the 2x4 by the way it'll be through the 4x4 the 2x4 will be on the top of the 4x4 let's take a look at some other little things here you'll see that stringer is the first full length 8 foot but then we've got a little bitty guy back here that really doesn't have any strength across its um, vertical here so you gotta you're gonna have to get creative when you attach these two and you'll see what I did is I took a four by four uh, four inch by four inch piece of marine grade plywood and sanded off all the edges anytime you're gonna be glassing or uh, putting Kevlar around the edges you want to make sure you 
bevel everything so you can bend around this turn real good. You'll see I used really good stainless steel screws. And what happens is the screws basically go both ways. There's just enough for them to kind of go through and then I offset them um, on the other direction. So there's eight screws holding this joint together and it is pretty sturdy. Really happy about that. So as you can see, we got all the stringers in here. Took the fuel tank out, obviously. Not much left to do besides put the actual flooring on top of this. But as you can imagine, before we get to that point, we're gonna have to use literally a boatload of peanut butter all along these edges. And use a lot of Kevlar. I got a 50 yard roll of it just for this purpose. I also still need to repair that front piece, which is right there underneath the boat, because that, that had actually um, had a little oopsie, as you saw in the earlier episode. We still got to fix that. Everything's nice and level. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and remove this engine mount, and I'll drill in the 4x4, just so you all can see it. I'm actually going to permanently drill this in a place just like that and then on top of four by four towards the outer edges I'll probably throw a screw in either one of them I'm gonna have a lag bolt that is probably maybe two or three inches and it'll go through this anyway and that'll bind the two but anyway just for decorative purposes I'll probably throw two screws in there you'll see another little thing I've done too and I did this on my last build is I stuck these two little plates on the top. They're two little sheets of plywood. And the reason why I always end up having to do that is because this edge right here, specifically the gap here, is always tough to capture. You can measure and measure and measure and likely the likelihood that you're going to get it perfectly is not very, not very likely. So what you got to do sometimes is you use this Let's see if I can put that back. This is easy to fill this gap, but this gap that was back here is, tends to be a little too thick for the peanut butter to take take hold. This here is pretty easy to, to cover. So that's why I put this plate. And also as the water kind of runs down, it gives it some more strength here. So over time, you don't have any issues. So the water will kind of run down. Same thing on this side gaps kind of thick over here but it does taper down about right here so we'll put some peanut butter in this side covers up the gap nice and clean beveled edges you won't even really be able to tell that this is in here after we glass it because this will all look nice and smooth so I'm pretty happy about the engine stands as they come out you can see once again make sure as you're doing this that you cut these reliefs out for the engine uh, exhaust it kind of rolls this way I have forgot to put that in one time and I was very unhappy because I ended up having to, to cut all this out afterwards fiberglass gel coat everything it was a pain in the butt so anyway that's that what we're gonna do next is like I said we're gonna pull this this entire engine stand out completely flip it over and permanently attach these guys here all right so you can see i've got all the screws installed mostly around the engine mount we've got our pieces of pine that go across that's going to simulate the floor went ahead and leveled everything made sure everything looked good i did stick a piece of douglas fir in a few spots just to make sure we kept level just how i like it Nothing too crazy, just to make sure everything is perfect. Went also around and cleaned everything up with some acetone and uh, de-waxer. You probably saw earlier how I had not beveled this side and the screws that were sticking out. We, um, we went through and fixed those because we want to get those. We don't want any screws sticking out at the ends there, so you can see on both sides. We've nipped, nipped those off. I've also removed the stringer in this location here 
because I need to fix the crack that's in there. It's not really a true crack, it's human error and my fault, mostly. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we are right now. We're pretty much in a, in a super good spot. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to work on mixing some epoxy, peanut butter mostly, but for right now, we'll go ahead and fix this. It's probably about a three foot crack. I've been talking about it for a while now. I'll go ahead and get in there and fix that. We're gonna lay some Kevlar on it. So stay tuned while I go ahead and apply it. As soon as I get that applied, I'm gonna immediately put the stringer back in place so it kind of creates a permanent bond. So that's gonna be the plan here. And then I'll run three screws in the back. We should be good to go. And then we'll finish the peanut butter application all across your stringer. It's gonna be a lot of it. The main thing is you wanna to try to make sure your peanut butter is super smooth along the edges because you can imagine if you don't, you're gonna have a lot of sanding to do in here. All right, so take a look here. We got a few layers of Kevlar on this right. You can see this is that repair that we made. And I can tell you this is probably a lot stronger than the whole of the boat in general. Underneath here, there's 15 ounces of Kevlar, which is three times uh, as much as we normally use. So it looks good. I'm super confident. You'll see as we move up a little bit, we've, we've made that bond for finishing off the ski locker. Got a little bit more to do along those edges to make sure we got a sealed surface. But it looks good. This epoxy, fabulous. Let's look over here on the left. I've gotten a few questions about how to apply the peanut butter properly. And nothing really too crazy. What you want to look for is any kind of gaps in here. You'll see how I've applied it in here to make what looks like, um, you know, just a smooth edge. And it just gives something for the Kevlar to stick to, so it's nice and smooth as it goes through. Do you need to have peanut butter applied under the stringer? Not necessarily, but as you're applying the peanut butter paste in between these stringers here, you'll see here I got about a quarter inch gap. The peanut butter will kind of flow in there, the epoxy or polyester resin, whatever you're using, will actually kind of flow in between there naturally as uh, gravity pulls it down. Also kind of depends on how thick you make your peanut butter too. If it's really super clumpy, then it probably won't flow. But if, as long as you mix it pretty well and it's not too clumpy, it'll actually flow in between those cracks and kind of create that, that bond that you're looking for. Which then leads me to my last point here is when you go to put your Kevlar or 1708 on it, it just makes this nice smooth edge. And as you can see here, we won't be able to quite, we won't be able to do it just right off the bat since it's dry because we'll have to do a little bit of light sanding. As I mentioned, these little pieces of chop strand that are floating up like that will cause some issues. Good thing is when you go to grind the epoxy, it's nowhere near as dirty as you've seen on my prior videos when we go to grind out just the um, polyester resin. It's really nasty stuff. It gets all over the place. You'll actually be able to, to grind this out and it'll just create a little bit of dirt, uh, or not dirt, but um, leftover resin in this area. It doesn't get all over the front of the bow and all that business, so it's looking good. You'll see as we move into the where the fuel cell is located, this is where I made the, the patch come through to make sure we had a good, um, good bond along this marine plywood, because this is the center part of the boat that does carry a good amount of weight, so I want to make sure we extended the Kevlar underneath it and then we built up the peanut butter along this edge it's pretty smooth I probably won't need to do very much grinding along this I can kind of feel it that's the trick is if you can feel it with your finger little little spots you probably need to grind it out a little bit and then I'll get my Kevlar scissors I got a little strand I'll cut that out but that's gonna pretty much do it for this video series I'm going to go ahead now, do a little bit more grinding along this edge. I got a little bit more peanut butter to lay across this way. That side is pretty well good. And as we progress here, we'll be that much 
closer to getting the flooring installed. So I hope you like the journey so far. Smash that subscribe button so you can see the videos as I release them. If you've got any questions, leave some comments in the comments field. Be more than happy to answer it for you. We'll catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.